Hi, this is Mike Bradley with 102.5 The Game ESPN Radio Nashville. I'm on my way down to see my good friend Mark Brasfield at the Nashville Safe House. Mark's invited us down for a tour and to provide us information as to why and how we need to secure our guns and valuables. Stay with us. This will be fun and informative. Hey Mark. Hey Mike. Welcome good to the Safe House. Good to see you. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm down here for my tour. Okay. And, in, and information about what we need to know about gun safes. Okay. Well, we carry a large selection of safes. This is our smaller uh, showroom for our smaller safes and our large gun safes are out in the uh, warehouse that I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay. But uh, usually when my customers come in, when they're asking about safes, um, my first question is what they're going to put in their safe. And that's going to determine the kind of safe that they need. Uh, if they're uh, putting more high value uh, valuables in their safe, uh, of course they need more security. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, one of the four things that I discuss with them is the different features of the safe. And one is going to be security. Uh, not all safes are created equal. Uh, your different fire ratings are going to come in different uh, fire ratings from about 30 minutes up to two, two, two and a half hours. And then of course, the interior configurations, uh, and that goes into what you're putting in the safe, it needs to be configured in different ways. And then, of course, safe manufacturer uh, and how the safe is built, because all safe companies and safes, uh, they're all different. Now, these are document safes here. Uh, pretty much uh, valuable safes. You can put, uh, like this one right here, you can put jewelry in with the jewelry drawers that pull out. Uh, this happens to be a Fort Knox safe, which uh, they make an excellent safe, and uh, you can get them configured with shelves for you know bulkier items and stuff. So you can put documents, jewelry, you know, money, paperwork, coins, anything you want. The gun safes tend to be a little bit taller, of course, to configure for uh, long guns. What brands do you carry? Uh, I carry about eight to ten different brands. My main brands uh, that I sell the most of would be your Browning. Uh, the Fort Knox and the Liberty are my three main brands, but I also carry Champion and Superior, which are the same company, uh, Winchester and uh, American Security and uh, Gardal are a few of the other ones that I carry. But, uh, you know, I can step out here in the larger safe showroom and uh, show you some of those. Well, let's do that. Okay. Let's like this. If you want to step out here, Mike, I'll uh, show you some of the security features of the different safes. Okay. For the most part, when you start talking about safes and the different features that they have, the one thing that I mentioned is the security rating. Mm -hmm. Most of your gun safes on the market today are rated at an RSC level rating, which is a residential security container. So if we take one of our highest end Fort Knox safes and take one of our lower end, say our Winchesters, they're both rated at an RSC rating. So as a customer, if you look at that, you can visually see that the Fort Knox or the Browning or the Liberty are stronger, beefier safes, but they're, they're rated at the same rating. And the reason these companies do that, it costs more to rate the safes at higher ratings, even the ones that are more secure, it would cost more to do the extra rating on it. Mm -hmm. So when a customer comes in and I show them the different ratings on the safes or the different security on the safes, I show them the metal thickness and the door thickness and stuff on the safe. On the safes, there's different metal thicknesses. And of course, thicker metal is gonna make a more secure safe. So if I take a 12 gauge piece of metal and I compare it to say a 3 8 of course, the 3 8 that's going to be a more secure safe. It's going to be a more expensive safe, mm -hmm. but it's going to be more secure. So we look at the different metal thicknesses 
on the safe. That 12 gauge is the minimum that I recommend and all the safes that I have in here have a minimum of 12 gauge metal thickness on the body. Okay. A lot of safes for the most part are going to have a 10 gauge which is a little bit over an eighth of an inch metal thickness on the body and the door construction and your better safes are going to go up from there that's 7 gauge which is 3 sixteenths and then your quarter inch plate and then the other one I showed which was a 3 8 so when you look at the construction of the safe the door and the body you want to look at the metal thickness that's one of the main things that you need to look at because it's a more secure safe so the lower the number the better correct and then with, of course as you get up into the higher numbers you're going to go quarter and three eighths and half inch and stuff like that so on my little displays here which are a good visual representation of what's inside the doors and the bodies if you look at this door from a Fort Knox Titan series it's going to have a three eighths inch back plate and then it's got a, a uh, thinner front plate and then it's laminated together with uh, the fireboard and it's called a composite door now the other side to that would be a strict plate door on a safe and it's going to be the plate and then some fireboard behind it it's not a composite so you can have a plate door or you can have a composite door or a combination of both this is kind of a combination of both okay. so but here again the thicker the metal the better so if I look at my uh, lowest end safe it's of course going to have a door that's going to be constructed like that out of thinner metal okay. and then it's going to have the fireboard inside of it laminated together and if you look at this cutaway by American Security on their BF rated safe and here again it's a higher rating than the residential security container because it's got that half inch door on it so if you look at a half inch plate versus say a 10 gauge of course that's more security and that's what you need to look for for a more secure safe the next thing that we're going to look at or I'm going to tell my customers about is fire rating the safes are going to have different fire ratings and different companies test their safes at different temperatures so if I take a safe that's tested at 1200 degrees the furnace temperature and I take a safe that's tested at say 1680 like the Fort Knox or a higher temperature for some different companies and I've got the same internal temperature of course the one with the highest furnace temperature is the better safe the benchmark for fire safes whether it's a gun safe home safe or anything is an internal temperature of 350 and they do that because paper starts to be damaged in that range and it it chars and starts to burn in the 400 degree range a little bit higher so that gives you a benchmark to know so if I have a 30 minute rated safe in 30 minutes somewhere in that safe during that test got to 350 and I take my Fort Knox the hour and a half or my Brownie two hour or my Liberty two and a half hour whatever it is that's the benchmark that you need to look for because in that safe during that test temperature or that test time the temperature got up to 350 and the reason that's important is because the paper whether it's money birth certificates deeds whatever it is insurance papers they're going to start being damaged with that being said the other thing you need to look at here again is what you're putting in the safe different products are damaged to different temperatures if I have my guns in there they're not damaged into the uh, upper fours 500 degree range and higher coins are of course going to be melted till thousands of degrees but they're going to be tarnished so if you have collector coins and they get hot they're, they tarnish which diminishes their value so the higher fire rating the better because it's going to protect all of the products you have because if you have backup discs and open pictures and film negatives they're damaged in that 120 180 degree range you could leave them in your car on a hot summer day and they're going to be damaged right. so you really need to protect that kind of stuff even more because uh, they're going to be damaged at a lower temperature so you can get a little firebox you know 20 to 50 dollars that's rated for 30 minutes at 1200 degrees and put it inside whatever safe you get and then you add double protection for a little uh, a little money and you carry those here we do yeah that's a little accessory that we sell quite a few of but when we uh, talk about the fire rating and the, the way that they're done you need to look at test temperature and the time that it was done and uh, one thing I didn't mention fire rating and security rating come hand in hand so as I go up in one I go up in another one so if I have a little 30 minute rated fire safe it's gonna have less security 
than my hour and a half or my two hour to two and a half hour rated safe. And to give you an idea, I, I was talking about the Fort Knox Titan. It's rated at an hour and a half at 1680. And then, you know, you ha have your three eighths inch door, uh, a good strong composite door. It has a double wall construction on the safe uh, and a double wall construction is just what it sounds like. It's gonna be two pieces of metal. You have your outer, which is gonna be the thicker and your inner uh, liner. So it's more protection. So if someone did happen to cut through this, they're gonna have to get through the fireboard and then cut through the inner line. And it, and it makes the uh, structural integrity of the safe stronger too. Is that information on the safes? Uh, on the safes, like- As far as the fire rating? Uh, there's uh, tags on all the doors, which they're required to have, pretty much. Most of your reputable safe companies are gonna have a sticker that's gonna show the test temperature and the max internal temperature. So, and of course, um, the longer the test and the higher the furnace temperature, the better. The biggest thing about the fire test is if it's a reputable company that's done a reputable test. Because if you look at some of your internet advertisers that sell safes, I can put anything I want to on the internet and say anything I want for the most part. And there's a lot of internet companies out there, a few that uh, say a lot of things about their a lot of things about their safes that aren't really true and they'll stick a sticker on their safe and say they have a long fire rating but you can look at the body thickness and the, the fireboard thickness and there's no way that they have that kind of fire rating because what a fire liner does this is a cutaway of a browning safe this is an hour and 40 minute fire rating on their safe so if I'm a company and I come up and say my safe is a two hour rated safe and I have half the fireboard that's just impossible because what this does is it slows the absorption of heat into the safe. And that's what every fire liner does, whether it's an American security with their concrete material or a browning with a sheetrock material, which is an excellent insulator to um, any other fire board, fire uh, seal or anything. That's what its basic function is to slow the absorption of the heat okay. into the safe. The minimum bolt thickness on a, a, a gun safe is gonna be your one inch bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing about the browning, which is why I have my browning hat on, they have a special bolt system, they call it the pry stop bolt system. And what that is, is when the bolts are extended out, instead of just being attached to the back plate that um, moves the bolts back and forth, right. it's reinforced, hence the pry stop. So if someone does try to go and pry this door, they, they'd have a tougher time doing it. Okay. okay? So we're gonna go from a, a one inch bolt system uh, the next progression would be an inch and a quarter, which if you'll walk over here, I'll show you an inch and a quarter, which, and we're still going to look at a browning safe for this demonstration. So this would be an inch and a quarter bolt system. This is four sided coverage, uh, on the door. You can get, uh, you know, different amounts of bolts on the doors and make it more secure. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to go from the one inch door, uh, bolts to the inch and a quarter, uh, more security, and these are also the pry stop bolt systems that the Browning okay. can make. Now, the next uh, thing you can do to make the door more secure with bolts is to have a corner bolt. And on this, this is their next step up, which is called their medallion series. It's gonna have inch and a quarter bolts, but it's gonna have corner bolts, which uh, lets the door resist prying even more up at the vulnerable parts at the corners. Okay. So you're going to go size-wise, you jump up from that, then you're going to go more bolts, the corner bolt, and then on their gold series, you're going to step up another size, and instead of just front corner bolts, you're going to have rear corner bolts too. So you're jumping up in size, you're going to go from one inch, inch and a half, or inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, and more locking bolts. And if you can see they put them closer together. So to be able to pry this door open, you're gonna to have to have something mechanical to pry it open. Me and you couldn't grab a crowbar and pop this That's door open. That's quite significant. One of the other ways you can uh, secure the door, and I will put my Fort Knox hat on. Fort Knox was really the developer of a corner bolt system. And I'll 
show you here. Push that little pin back there for me, Mike. They're called a uh, star bolt, and if you see how theirs uh, would lock into the frame of the safe, mm -hmm. they're the same design, but they were really the innovators of a corner bolt system. So you, you can see between the progression in the doors, the thicker the bolt, the thicker, of course, your metal in the door and everything is going to make your safe more secure, where you, you really couldn't pry this door yeah. open. And to give Liberty a little time here, Liberty, on their bolt systems, on their top of the line would be their presidential, and they have an internal hinge, which isn't going to let the door swing as much, but if you see, this is a uh, inch and a half bolt. So thicker bolts, more security, uh, harder to pry the door open, and uh, when you get to a certain level in the safe, someone's not going to be able to pry the door open to begin That's with, because you're going to have to rip the safe apart. Yeah. So. Security-wise, um, max security on the the larger uh, bolt systems mm -hmm. versus the one inch. Now, a one inch bolt uh, is secure as long as it's designed correctly. And like the uh, Browning pry stop bolt system, it's going to be more secure than your um, cheaper systems, like in your big box safes that you see at the uh, big box stores. I see. Well, Mark, tell me about the configuration of the inside of the safe. What's important for me to know there? Well, the different safes, as you go up in price on a safe, you're going to get a nicer interior, just kind of like the different uh, metal thicknesses and bolt thicknesses. Mm -hmm. um, this is an example of a kind of an economy uh, Liberty safe. It's called the Revere. It's not going to have any kind of door package on it, any uh, pistol storage or zipper pouches or anything.